So in today's video, I'll show you how to set up the Aris SBG10. Now this is a modem router combo device. And if you're looking to buy one of these, I'll leave a link right below the video. So feel free to check that out. Now I've gone ahead and taken the device out of the box. And what you'll find once you do that, and once you remove all the protective packaging, is the device itself, its power adapter, and some very critical documentation, which I'll get to in a second. Now the most important piece of information that is included with this documentation are the device's Wi-Fi SSIDs and passwords and also very importantly the Mac ID of the device. Now if for some reason you can't find this documentation in your packaging you'll find the same exact information on the sticker on the bottom of the device which is really helpful and the first step in the process is to connect your coaxial cable or coax cable and this cable typically comes out of an outlet on the wall and is provided by your internet service provider. Now if you're like me and have an existing modem plugged into this coax cable, you will need to unscrew the coax cable from the back of your existing modem. And before you do that, you want to unplug your existing modem. And in most cases, you should just be able to unscrew the coax cable using this nut on the coax cable, turn it counterclockwise. In most cases, it will just be finger tight. But for some reason, if it's been tightened a little too tightly, you're going to have to use an adjustable wrench like this one. And if you don't have one of these, I'll leave a link right below the video. And all you would do in this case is just break the nut loose and then use your hands, again, turning it counterclockwise, and then gently disconnect it from the old modem. And this is the back of our new modem. And as you can see, we have the coax connector labeled here in blue. And that's what we're going to plug into. Grab your coax cable and you'll notice that there is a protruding piece of wire coming out of it. And you want that to align with the hole in the middle of the coax jack on the back of your modem. And then you want to gently begin to push it inward and tighten the nut on that coax cable and you want to make sure you don't have much resistance as you tighten it so you don't destroy the threads. So keep turning it nice and gently all the way in till you can actually feel quite a bit of resistance on your hands and that's when you want to stop. And then I'm going to plug one end of the provided power adapter into the bottom of the modem and then you can plug the other end into a wall outlet. Now once you have the coax cable connected and the device plugged into a wall outlet, it goes through its basic boot up sequence that involves all the green LEDs on the front going through a flashing state and then eventually ending up green or a solid green. And this could take a few minutes. Now, the only exception to that is the second LED from the top, which is the data connection LED. And that will continue to flash until we get this device activated with our ISP. And I'll walk you through that. And as you can see here, the power LED is on. The data connection LED is flashing because we haven't activated it with our internet service provider and the other two LEDs on the bottom are now a solid green and this lets us know that it's gone through its initial boot up sequence, which is a good thing. And the next step in the process is to call your internet service provider or your ISP. And you're going to need your device's Mac ID, which can be found on the sticker that came with the device or on the outside of the box. Or if you can't find it anywhere else, you'll find it on the sticker on the bottom of your device. And you're going to provide this information to your internet service provider so they can actually activate the mode modem on the network, that is this specific modem on their network. And that typically takes about five to 10 minutes, again, depending on how long it takes to get through to your internet service provider. Now, some providers like Cox, Infinity or Spectrum may actually let you activate it through their app or through a web interface. So you don't actually have to call them. So you kind of want to check with your service provider to see what the easiest way is to activate your modem. But most of the time, I've actually seen it's just easier to give them a call and do it over the phone. And once you're done with that, the device will automatically reboot. And once it reboots, you'll notice that all the LEDs on the front are now a solid green. And you'll notice that there is an additional LED, which has now come online, which is the third LED from the top. And this is really good news. This lets us know that everything is working as intended. And we can now proceed to the next step, which is setting up 
the Wi-Fi network on this device. So let's go ahead and do that. Now for the rest of the setup, I recommend using this method versus the method that is recommended by the manufacturer, which is using the app and setting it up. And the reason for using this method is because the app, the Surfboard Central app, is extremely glitchy. And to do this, you can either use a Windows computer, a Mac, or even a tablet. You can do it from a web browser on a phone, but I always recommend using a larger device just so you can see what you're doing. And again, the setup process on any device is pretty much identical. I'm going to go into my Wi-Fi settings up here. Click on your Wi-Fi settings. And the two networks that we're looking for are the networks that start with the word RS. And these were actually listed on that sticker that came with the device. And you want to look for those two networks. And you can pick either one. Click on that. Click connect. And then it'll ask you for the password. And the password again was on that sticker. So let's enter the password. And once you've entered that password, click next. And once it's connected to that network, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to click and open up a browser window. Now I'm going to open up a Google Chrome window, but you can use any browser you like. And then I'm going to type in 192.168.0.1, then hit enter. And this will actually bring you to the admin panel login for the router. Now this is where you can actually access all the settings and make all the changes that you need to make. Now it states the username as admin and that is the default username. So you don't need to change that. What you do need is the password and the password in this case is just the word password in lowercase and then click apply. Then it logs you into the page and lets you know that it's probably not safe to continue using the default settings, especially to log into this interface. And what I recommend doing is changing that first. So you want to click here and we're going to actually change the password for the login for this admin panel. This is not your Wi-Fi password. We'll do that in a few minutes, but we should ideally change the login for the admin panel. And so we're going to enter the old password, which in this case was just the word password. And then you're going to enter a new password and you want to make sure you remember this password. I've entered that password and then I'm going to click apply. And then it says that your unit is updating. Please wait for a moment. Then it'll actually just bring you back to this page. And it seems as if nothing has happened. But in fact, your password has been changed. So let's move on to the next step. And the next step is to actually configure your two Wi Fi networks, that is the 2.4 gigahertz Wi Fi network and the five gigahertz network. And the reason you do this is for better security and to ensure you have a unique name for your Wi Fi network, I'm going to go back and click on the tab that says a basic setup. So click basic setup. And this brings you back to the main page of the system basic setup. And here is where we're going to actually change our Wi Fi network name and password or Wi Fi network names and passwords. So let's do that. And we're going to make that change to both the 2.4 gigahertz network and the five gigahertz network. And in my case, I'm just going to call it test RS I'm going to type in a new password. And again, these names and passwords are entirely of your choosing. So feel free to choose anything you want. And for the 5G network, I'm going to call it test RS 5G. Again, enter a password. It can be the same password or a different password entirely up to you. You don't want to change any of the other settings and you want to scroll down and click apply. Now, the moment these changes are saved, it'll immediately boot you off the network that we just connected to, which was the RS 2659 network because two new networks have been created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my Wi-Fi settings and you're going to scroll down in your Wi-Fi settings and look for two new networks that were created, test RS and test RS 5G. That's what I called my networks, but these will be the networks that you created. And I'm going to log into test RS. You can pick either one. So click on that, click connect. Let's enter the password that we just created. Click next. And then it says that it is connected. Now we're going to go back into our web browser where the interface was open. And I'm just going to click the refresh button to reload that page. Now, once it's reloaded, you can actually scroll down and you'll notice that both these networks test RS and test RS 5G and the new passwords are now visible. And that's pretty much all the setup that you need to do to get both your modem and your router up and running. And if you're looking to buy one of these, I'll leave a link right below the video. So feel free to check that out as well. Hope you found this video 
useful. If you did, please hit that like button and please also consider subscribing to my channel for more reviews, unboxings and how-to videos. And if you have any questions regarding the setup or questions regarding the device itself, please leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.